One of the things I love about Final Cut Pro is that it's so intuitive. With maybe the exception of chroma keying in Final Cut Pro, the green screen keyer effect is kind of complex, but it works great if you know how to work it. So today I'm going to walk you through how to master green screen keying in Final Cut Pro. And a little surprise for you, you can key out any color with the green screen keyer. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to start with a really simple shot, and then we're going to work our way into more complex situations. And I've got 10 really great green screen tips for you along the way. Let's just dive right Right into it. Let's first start with this shot. This is going to be our easiest shot. You can see the background is relatively even. It is a fabric backdrop and we can tell because there's some wrinkles here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And the best part is, is that his hair is like this one solid piece. It's not too curly, not too many flyaways, and it's a pretty wide shot. So I think we're going to have a pretty easy time with this. Let's just select that clip in our timeline and drop on that green screen here by double clicking the effect and let's take a look at what we've got. Now, let me give you my first tip here, which is that you want to start the process of green screening without your background dropped in. So you can see I do have a background underneath this shot, but it is disabled. So we can really look at the quality of our key. Now, if I look really closely, I can still see a little bit of the remnants of the green screen here. So what I'm going to do is in the inspector window under matte tools, I'm going to twirl down and I'm going to get these levels sliders. I'm just going to pump up the blacks and you can see how easily just that quick move cleaned up our key. Now it's time for my next tip for you, which is that before you enable your background, let your clip render out so you can really get a good look at the shot and make sure you've got a very clean key. So we've rendered and I'm just going to play it back. And yeah, this is really clean looking. Let me enable my background. And yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. Now let's move on to this shot, which is definitely a little more tricky, isn't it? We've got green on green, kind of an unusual situation, but I think we can handle it. All right, let's drop on that green screen here again. And that did some funky stuff to our arugula, didn't it? You can see that it keyed out the bright green background, but the color of our leaves is not good. That's because Final Cut Pro automatically applies spill suppression to your clips when you apply the green screen keyer effect. What is spill suppression? It basically makes a color wash over your clip that's like the exact opposite color of the color you're trying to key out. So in this case, and in most cases, it's going to apply a red or pink tint to your clips to try to counterbalance any like green bounce or reflection that your actual video that you're trying to preserve is getting off the background from let's say like the lighting. So you can see clearly that my arugula looks really brown. That's because when you mix a red tint over the green color of these leaves, you're going to get brown. So my next tip for you is to assess the spill level on your effect. So in this particular case, I want to bring my spill level all the way down. And now you can see that I've brought back the greens in my arugula and they look great. But if I'm being really picky, if I look super close at my leaves, you can still see the outline of that green screen on the edges of my leaves. Let's twirl down again on matte tools and let's use the shrink and expand slider to try to clean up those edges. And here's my next tip for you. This particular slider only moves in increments of one unless you manually type in a value. So you can see as I slide back and forth, the slider is jumping in whole numbers here, but I can just double click on this value and I'm going to enter a value of negative 1.5 and so now I've gotten rid of that bright green outline, but I haven't eaten away too much at the edge of my arugula leaves. Now I'm going to run my playhead and make sure I'm happy with my shot. Looks good. Let's enable that background. And now it's time for tip number five, which is to apply your color corrections after you've done your chroma keying. So in this particular shot, I think that my arugula looks a little too saturated compared to the background here. So I'm just going to real quick apply a color board and reduce that saturation. So the tone of it better matches the background. Let's move on to this next shot, which is a yellow background, not a green background. We can key out this yellow background. So let me apply that green screen here. And right away, we can see that we're not keying out that background. In fact, we're sort of keying out some of the shadows on her sweatshirt and on her face. 
So to get rid of the yellow in the shot, we're going to reach for the sample color tool. Now you can enable this tool just by selecting this box here in the inspector, or you can hold down the shift key and then click and drag a rectangle right in your viewer. Now we've eliminated most of the yellow, but the spill suppression is definitely overpowering our shot and affecting it. The opposite color of yellow is purple and she definitely has a very purple hue. So I am going to dial down that spill to restore her natural appearance. And again, on the matte tools, I'm gonna to bring up these levels to get rid of these remnants. And we're going to dial up the midtones as well to try to get rid of a little more of that outline. And then let's use the shrink tool to get rid of that outline in her hair. Now you can see that I'm losing some of her sweatshirt here. We can use what's called the fill holes tool to restore some of those smaller areas that may have been keyed out when we made other adjustments. So I'm going to just nudge up fill holes until she looks great again. And again, make sure to render out the shot to really get a look at your final results. Let's enable the background. And I would say this doesn't really look that natural. Tip number six is to just do what you got to do to make the background and your foreground shot look like they were shot at the same time. So I've already applied a gradient blur to this background shot to sort of bring these posts more in focus, but blur out the back. I also think the lighting and the coloring look off. Ideally, you would know ahead of time what shot you were going to put in the background of a chroma key shot so you could design your lighting to sort of make sense and match that shot. But that isn't always the case. And in post, you can make improvements for sure. So the first thing I notice is that I feel like the light on our subject is pretty dark. So I'm going to grab this ambient light effect from Boris to really brighten her up. I also think she looks very yellow and warm toned as if she was shot in a studio, which clearly she was, but she's being laid over an outdoor shot. So we definitely need to cool down her color temperature. So I'm just going to grab the color wheels and just nudge down the temperature a little bit. I also think she looks a little too saturated for the rest of the shot. So I'm just going to pull down the global saturation as well. And now let's move on to our background shot. Let's again apply the color wheels and I'm going to increase the saturation a little bit on this shot and I'm going to warm up the temperature a little bit. And I still think she looks very digital and clean over this background. So I'm going to apply some film grain as well, which you can find under the stylized category. And I'm going to switch this from iMovie green to realistic grain and dial it down a hair. And we're getting there, but I have one more tip for you on this shot. Tip number seven is to use the light wrap tool when you're keying someone who was shot indoor on a studio over an outdoor background. Let's go back to the green screen keyer effect and twirl down on light wrap. I'm just going to bring up the amount on this a little bit. What it's going to do is make it look as if there's a light source coming from behind her. All right, let's move on to our fourth and most difficult shot. If you've ever tried to key out anybody who has curly hair and a lot of flyaways, you know how difficult this can be. Also, it's a really close shot. So we're going to see a lot of detail and her eyes kind of match the background, don't they? We definitely have our work cut out for us here. Let's apply that green screen filter. Now here's something to know about the green screen keyer. It is called the green screen keyer, obviously, but it will also key out blue backgrounds instantly as well. Sometimes you might shoot someone maybe who's blonde, like in this case, over a blue screen rather than a green screen. It makes their hair a little bit easier to key out. And you can see right away, it's done a pretty okay job, but I still see a lot of outlines here that I really would like to get rid of. So in this case, instead of going for the sample color, since the blue has already been eliminated, we're going to go for the edges tool. Again, to enable the edges tool, just click this box or the shortcut is to hold down the command key and then click and drag a line from your subject to the negative space like so. And then you're going to grab this handle in the middle and we can make adjustments to the edge with this handle. Let's go back to the spill level slider for our spill suppression. And in this case, I actually want to punch the spill level up. Her background was blue and the opposite of blue is orange and orange is like your skin tone, right? So we actually want to push the spill level up here. Now, if you've lost your edge tool and you want to go back to it, you can use this line here, jump to sample. It works very similar to jumping back and forth between keyframes. I'm going to arrow forward to find that edge tool again. And again, I'm going to play with this handle 
And I know this doesn't look right, but that's okay. Right now, I'm just paying attention to how clean we're getting a cutout on her hair. So I'm gonna leave it there. Now what I'm going to do is reach for the strength slider. Tip number eight is that you don't have to use the green screen here at full strength. You'll notice if I pull down on the strength, I'm bringing back a lot of her skin. Now I'm gonna take this handle again from our edges tool and I'm gonna bring it back up to the negative space. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere. What I wanna show you is what this edges tool is actually doing. Let's twirl down on color selection. Watch what happens in the spectrum as I play with this handle. The circle in the center of the spectrum is going more towards center or toward the edge. But those aren't your only options here. You can actually manually move this circle and get more of a fine tune on your key. So we're gonna really hone in on this color wheel. Here's tip number nine. Hold down the Z key and you get a magnifying glass and then click on the color wheel to zoom into it. Bet you didn't know you could do that, did you? All right, now let's grab that center puck. And now you can see I can move the center puck more freely to really fine tune that key. And now I'm going to play with the Luma controls here to fine tune even more. Now, when someone has curly hair like this, you might be tempted to reach for the soften or erode tools. Personally, I try to avoid those tools as much as possible. When I see someone that has softening around their hair or even worse, the erosion around their hair, it's a dead giveaway to me that this is a keyed shot. And isn't that what we're trying to avoid? Having it look fake, right? We want it to look realistic. So soften and erode are two tools that I personally wouldn't recommend reaching for unless you really had no other options. Now let's enable our background, which brings me to tip number 10, which is just to play it smart. I know this woman was shot over a blue background, so I'm going to put her now in a blue room. This is really just gonna make it easy on myself. Sometimes the trick to chroma keying is just to play it smart. I'm gonna add a little contrast to our subject, just to make her match a little bit better with the lighting and really make her pop off that screen. And there you go, I think she looks pretty great. So that is my process for using the green screen here, here in Final Cut Pro. Do you guys do things differently or did you learn something? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I picked out some other videos for you. I'll see you again.